Welcome to this month's Ask EMBM, where we tackle all your questions from the world of e-bikes. So everything from whether you should turn your bike off when you ride downhill, where you can hire e-bikes, or whether you should buy your child an e-bike, all coming up in this month's Ask EMBM. Right, before we dive into the big question this week about whether you should buy a kid an e-bike, don't forget you can subscribe to EMBN by clicking on the link down below. Now, uh, there's some other quite pressing questions from you guys this week. Mm -hmm. uh, this one from David Dunlop. Uh, David says, hi, I've recently moved from the Vitus E Sommet uh, 2019 with 27.5 inch wheels to the Orbea Wild FS with 29 inch wheels. Mm -hmm. The, the Orbea, uh, so the, sorry, the Vitus is a medium with a 455 millimeter reach and is a great bike to ride. The Orbea Wild is a large with the same reach of 455 millimeters. Now, this is the key point. David says, the thing is the Orbea feels labored and sluggish and possibly cumbersome on corners. Are there any ideas on what I can do to get the Orbea to feel a bit more nimble? Am I just not feeling it? But uh, I'm sure in a f with a few tweaks, it'll be running perfectly. Any advice from us guys? Well, I think there's a huge, huge topic here, which is 29 versus 27.5. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing, it revolves around feeling versus fact. Now, a 29 inch wheel bike will feel slower on the steering than a 27.5, but it's simply a feeling, that's it. I suggest maybe one thing you do is actually go and put some times in to show uh, how they compare, compare back to back. Maybe it's such a thing as the tires you've got on your bike, or maybe you're not just tuned in to that 29 inch wheel quite yet. Yeah, for sure, and I think changing a few bits in the cockpit area as well, maybe a shorter stem, bit of a higher rise bar, but a bit more aggressive feel going on, mm. might liven it up a little bit, but as Steve says, I think that wheel size is a big thing that's going it on is. with that bike. It's, uh, yeah, they have two, they're two quite different beasts mm. and require different ways of riding them. So, uh, yeah, I think I just persevere and just mm -hmm. get to get used to the, the ride on that 29 inch wheel bike. So Paulie600 is asking, hey guys, you helped out a lot last year with my question about where to hire a bike and go cycling in Scotland. This year around Easter, we're heading to South England, starting off in Rye. Same question like last year, any recommendations of where to ride and where to hire? Wow, obviously a different uh, different tune this week mm. to Scotland, down in the southeast, obviously uh, different landscape down there. But uh, I think there's loads going on in the southeast. Mm. I mean, you've got the Surrey Hills, you've got Pease Lake, uh, you've got Rogate, you've got the South Downs. There's the huge network of public rights away in that area. Uh, I'm not quite so tuned into bike hire though. Yeah, the hire, I had a quick Google search around earlier on and there's two or three options that come up in Rye. I think Rye Hire do quite a, a wide range of e-mountain bikes for hire as well, so check that out. Could be yeah. worth hooking you up with those yeah, guys. Yeah, and I think maybe some local knowledge. There's mm -hmm. an increasing amount of people uh, renting e-bikes out. So, uh, yeah, I mean, have a look on Facebook and stuff. Yeah, it's an amazing spot to ride, isn't it, down that way? Yeah. JPMTB. Yeah. So Carry does, on. Does anyone turn their bike off on downhill sections? Notice anything from doing so other than the battery being preserved for another run? Uh, what do you think? Well, I... I've turned my motor off mm -hmm. sometimes, but I generally don't switch my motor off uh, when I'm going downhill. I think um, I think what you'll find is that you you probably won't use your motor. It depends on the shape of the track, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if it is proper downhill, then that motor won't be kicking in at any point at during, that, during, that, yeah. during that section. Yeah. Um, I think you learn a lot about momentum, though, if you do mm -hmm. switch your motor off, and you will find that... Uh, an e-bike, even with a motor off, is faster than a non-e-bike. Does that make sense? Yeah, with the weight and stuff, yeah. Yeah, because what happens with a non-e-bike, you do get a lot of bounce with the, mm -hmm. with the bike, whereas an e-bike actually tracks the ground, and when you've got loads of rooty sections like that, it maintains its, its line through there, and so the there's less deflection. Stuff, it? Yeah, and also things to think about is the motor choice on your bike as well. I think if you were riding the Shimano system, if you come to the end of the downhill and then you try turning your motor on, it'll probably bring up the motor fork saying that it's got that error, mm -hmm. so you have to restart it and stop, whereas I don't think you're saving that much by turning it off personally. I, I think, I think, You've got a pointer because I think it is, it's a great skill to understand because e-bikes are quite different in the way you ride them to non-e-bikes. I think you get to learn the momentum and the timing and, and the flow of an e-bike, which is quite different, like I said, to an non-e-bike. So I think it's yeah. a good thing to do from time to time just to just yeah. get that feeling mm -hmm. dialed in.
Boy Patience is asking uh, about wheel size. Mm. Uh, I've noticed that a few e-mounted bikes have a mullet setup, which is 29 inch front and 27.5 rear. I'm thinking of upgrading my rear to a 29. What are the pros and cons of this? I'm looking at this option, so I don't need to have two different tubes and tires laying around. Now, my first thing I've noticed here, Chris, is that Roy says that he feels he's upgrading to a 29, which which is actually not the case because, I mean, the big question is why change in the first place? I mean, he says- It's gonna mess with the geometry surely, isn't it? Yeah, well he says it's because of different tires and tubes laying around. I think you need to think about it a bit more than this. Um, I'd want to point out as well, the mountain bike industry calls it mullet. Well, it's just simply a mixed wheel size bike. Um, that bike you've got is designed to work uh, for that mixed wheel size, you know, yep. so the geometry is set around it. So I'd highly recommend not changing that because it can upset the, the whole balance of your bike. Mm, I think the, the uh, wheel uh, size is going to be compromised as well, the tyre clearance in the back as well. Mm. You're going to find that you're going to be suffering mud tyre clearance. You might experience when suspension bottoms out, you might get a bit of tyre buzz even on the frame or possibly mm. the seat. So yeah. I don't think it's a good idea to be sticking that big wheel in the back. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, right, you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting a 29-inch wheel up front, which rolls through all the roots and rocks, and you've got that small, uh, smaller rear wheel, which is di designed with a shorter chainstay, mm -hmm. which means you can really dive in and out of those corners. Yeah. And a lot of the time, you find that the people who've made these bikes have got a low bottom bracket, so the handling of it is actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna stick a 29 inch wheel in that bike, it's gonna raise the bottom bracket, it's gonna cramp everything up. I just don't think it's a very good idea. move at no, all. No. So it's time for the leading question this week, and that is, should you buy your kid an e-bike? I think it's a good idea. I think when I first started mountain biking, my dad used to drag me around the woods up hills and things, and I was like <laughs> dreading it, you know, climbing up these big hills behind my dad, who was super fit, he was way stronger than me. And I thought, this is super hard work. I mm. think an e-bike back then would have made me instantly love mountain biking. Mm. I think from the outside, mountain biking does look super appealing as a kid, but you've yeah. got to be super strong to ride those bikes in those conditions and climb those hills and mountains. Yeah, so what, were you 28 at the time, or? I thought, yeah, I got it for my 30th. Okay, right. uh, I, think, I think Chris is right, I mean, I mean, hills and mountains are a huge barrier mm -hmm. to the sport, and I think if it came down to uh, a matter of your kid being inside playing games, watching TV, or getting out into the hills, mm -hmm. I think you, anybody would choose the latter, right? Yeah, and I think another thing to think about is the skills that you actually learn. The amount of time you ride on an e-bike on the trails compared to a standard bike. You know, say for instance, if you go to a bike park on a standard mountain bike, you might do five or six runs as a kid on a big, you know, loop. Mm -hmm. But an e-mountain bike, you might ride that loop 15, 20 times. So the amount of time you're actually spending mm -hmm. on your bike and learning bike skills but is three times as it's much. It's a big, it's, it's a huge question though it's, it really is a monumental question um there's so many angles to this isn't there really i mean we couldn't we could spend all day talking yeah. about it i mean it was quite interesting that rob warner who's the sort of voice behind world cup downhill he actually bought uh, his son fred an e-bike recently and he basically goes rides to across the fields to school on it yeah. every day and it's totally mm -hmm. transformed his life yeah i think another thing to think about obviously is the age of the kid that's riding an e-bike here mm -hmm. in the uk you've got to be 14 or over to legally ride it on the road i know some people don't adhere to that mm -hmm. and it varies as to where you are all over the world so yeah lots to think about for sure but yeah i mean if you want to get get your child out to the house enjoying the countryside mm -hmm. getting some bike skills things great thing you know maybe your child in years to come will swap back to an on e-bike Mm -hmm. but at least it gets them out in the dirt and, and the learning mud. those skills and the That's countryside's great for sure the grim reaper says is 2020 the year to buy an e-mountain bike or should we wait another year or two to allow the technology to grow and the prices to drop I think if you think like that, I think you're gonna be waiting a long time. I think now is the time to get out there and purchase that e-mountain bike, grab it by the horns, and get out there on the trails. Grab it by the horns. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I pretty much think the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there's two things to that though. One is the technology and one is the prices. I mean, there, there's a bit of a misconception amongst people that e-mountain bikes are expensive. Yes, I think they can be. I mean, mountain bikes are expensive, but I think if you look around, there's definitely some, uh, there's definitely a good variety in the prices of the models on the market. In terms of technology, well, actually I did a video on this not so very long ago, so I'm gonna dive into that right now. Nice. 
The thing is, a lot of passion within brands is actually now with e-bikes. And the more likely answer is that future e-bike developments are probably going to be led more by the motor. After all, why make a new bike with an old motor? Now, Fazua is a classic example, and they've caught the imagination of many brands with their lightweight battery and lightweight motor. And because you've got a blanking plate, you can actually take out the battery motor and stick in that blanking plate, and you've got two bikes. You've got an e-bike or a non-e-bike. And as we've seen here at Garda Festival, a kid's e-bike. 12 months ago, nobody heard of kid's e-bikes. Now it's amazing how popular the Shimano Steps motor has become in recent years. On bikes such as the Canyon, the Focus, the Intense, the Marie, the Husqvarna, there's no end of bikes. And in the YT Decoy, a bike that is thoroughly up to date. Right, we've got a question coming in from Mr. Japanomaniac. He's saying, I've got a question. I've got a spare specialized Turbo Levo 700 watt hour battery. A spare? So that's one a of those spare. huge ones, yeah. But there isn't a proper sized backpack out there to carry it in. Is there a perfect backpack big enough that I can use without placing it vertically in the backpack? 57 centimeters is too long for most bags. Ergon and Evoc are not long enough without sacrificing the expansion bag for it. Now, you used one of these packs, Hold on, didn't with, you? Without placing it vertically. Yeah, so you so want to put it horizontally in a backpack. That's like that's like that. You're gonna need like a PE kit bag or a tennis bag for that, aren't you? Um, that, yeah, it's a funny story. I did the Tour of Mont Blanc back in August and uh, I was using one of those Evoc bags mm -hmm. and I was actually carrying the battery like diagonally in, in, in the Evoc bag and it yep. wasn't until the last climb of the last mm -hmm. day that my uh, my colleague that day said, oh, you know, you can unzip the bottom part the expansion there, part. expansion part, mm -hmm. and drop the battery through. And not only that, you can therefore you can actually use the... Um, the harness for the battery, which is actually quite important mm -hmm. on, yeah, on, a, on a bag. Yeah, I think there, you know, there could possibly be some of a backpack that the battery will fit in. But I think if you are riding with a spare battery in your backpack, you definitely don't want to crash with that in there. One, it could crack or explode or leak, yeah. or you could break your back if you fall on some rocks. You There's got to be vertical Chris, right? Yeah, you're not going to ride with that horizontally in your backpack. I mean, like, you're going to be catching trees. Why didn't you have a bus? Whoa, it's <laughs> like, well, what is it? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think you're dead right. Mm -hmm. um, vertical is the only way to go. Yeah, and that Evoc bag is the only one on the market that it will fit in without compromising catching on your helmet. So that is the only route to go down, I'm afraid. And that's it for this month's Ask EMBN. Please do let us know your thoughts and comments on the whole business of buying your kids an e-mountain bike. After all, it is a dilemma for some people and obviously there is a lot of peer pressure involved. Plus, of course, that range of prices on the types of bike available. Yeah, and don't forget, if you guys want to get involved and have got any questions you want to ask us here at EMBN, drop us a comment in the comments box below. Hashtag Ask EMBN and your question could be you on next month's show. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the globe in the middle to subscribe to EMBN and don't forget to follow us on social media too.